welcome. Let's solve some problems together. Here's the first one. Bugs Bunny has been captured by Yosemite Sam and forced to walk the plank. Instead of waiting for Yosemite Sam to finish cutting the board from underneath him, Bugs finally decides just to jump. Bugs' position S is given by the equation S equals 1 half GT squared plus V naught T plus S naught. He jumps up at 16 feet per second from a plank 320 feet high. All right, so in that equation, G is the coefficient for gravity, and that equals a negative 16. Always. V naught is initial velocity. The clue to the initial velocity is the units, right? Velocity is in units per time. In this case, feet per second. So our initial, the Bugs Bunny's initial velocity is 16 feet per second. And S naught is initial height. Right? And you can tell he's starting 320 feet high, right? Yes, that's how high the plank is. All right, so now we can write the position equation. All right, so S is equal to 1 half times negative 16 T squared plus 16. Oh, by the way, um, so remember, velocity is directional, and so um, it, it's not going to say if it's if the object is going in a negative direction, it's not necessarily going to say negative 16 feet per second. We do know, however, this is a positive 16 feet because it's up. So be careful. Look for position words uh, or um, directional words like up, down, left, right. Up is positive. Down is negative. Right. So S equals 1 half times negative 16 T squared plus 16 T and plus 320. All right, so he's 320 feet high. That's going to be a positive value. Velocity, he's jumping up. That's going to be a positive value. Let's simplify this. So S equals uh, 1 half times negative, eight, uh, negative 16. Of course, it's going to be negative 8T squared plus 16T plus 320. All right, so now we want to find also the velocity equation. All we have to do is take the derivative. All right, so the derivative of the position equation is going to be negative 16t plus 16. All right, so we've got our velocity, actually we've got our position, and we've got velocity. I'm just going to put a box around that. All right, so when we need them, we can find them. All right, so B, when will Bugs Bunny hit the ground? All right, so where's, what's the ground located in? Well, first of all, notice that uh, the ground is a position. So we're looking for Bugs' position. Uh, and what position are we looking at? Well, the ground, of course, is zero feet. By the way, if this is over water, uh, it could be zero feet. It could be the water, right? So he could be hitting the, the surface of the water or the ground. Now, it seems like a plank would be on a boat, but either way, uh, it's going to be zero feet if it's the ground. All right, so now we're going to set the position equation equal to zero. All right, so this is B here. So we have, oh, no, I didn't put A, just to make sure that's clear. All right, so B equals, or so B for B, we have zero equals uh, negative 8T squared plus 16T plus 320. All right, the first thing we should do is factor out that negative 8. So we have T squared minus 2t minus uh, 40. Multiplies to give us a negative 40, adds to give us a negative 2. Now I'm pretty sure there's no such number um, because we have 4, time, four and 10, and that adds to 6 uh, And because uh, one of them has to be negative. So negative 10 and a positive 4 is negative 6. Uh, negative 8 and a positive 5 is negative 3. Uh, so there's nothing that's going to add to negative 2. So we need a way to solve this besides factoring. Um, 
because we can factor out that a value quite easily and we've got a nice pretty b value it's a nice even number pretty easy to work with let's use completing the square now right, i think completing the square would be the easiest in this case so if we divide both sides by negative eight we have zero equals t squared minus 2t minus 40. add 40 to both sides we have t squared minus 2t All right and then of course we're going to add negative 2 divided by 2 squared, and that's just 1. All right, so we've got 40 plus 1 equals t squared minus 2t plus 1. Factor the other side, we have 41 equals t minus 1 squared. Take the square root of both sides, we have plus or minus 41 equals t minus 1, so that means t equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 41. Of course, time has to be positive, right? So we need the positive answer only. So t is equal to 1 plus the square root of 41. And if you plug that into a calculator, decimal equivalent will be just fine. Um, take it to four decimal places, though. AP requires four decimal places. So 7.4031. All right, so that's going to be our B, the how long it takes them to hit the ground. What is Bugs' velocity at impact? What we need here, we need to know what V of, when he hits the ground, so V of 7.4031. So if they want to know the velocity at impact, right, we find out how long it takes for um, something to hit the ground, and we plug that value in for t, all right? So t is going to be how long it takes them to hit the ground. All right, so v of 7.4031, we've got negative 16 times 7.4031 plus 16. Now, would we expect a positive or a negative answer? Well, we're expecting a negative answer, aren't we? Right, because Bugs is, first he, he's going up in the air right, when he jumps, but then he's going to fall and he's going to hit the ground. I don't know how he's going to be after falling 320 feet. Uh, plus, no, actually, yeah, well, whatever, however far he jumps up before he starts falling down, um, that's quite a, quite a distance. I think he'd be a little bit hurt. But let's, let's hope for the best for Bugs Bunny, and let's find out how, what his velocity is as he's hitting the ground. So we have 16 times 7.4031 7 All right, so that's going to be, well, as I'm trying to manipulate a calculator and the microphone, so that's going to be negative 134.4496. And that is feet per second. All right, so he's falling. This is he's falling pretty fast to me. At least I don't want to hit the ground at that velocity. Right, so now let's find D. What is Bugs' speed at impact? Remember that speed. Actually, let's write it up here. Speed equals the absolute value of velocity. So all we have to do, so the speed at 7.4031 is just the absolute value of negative 134.44496 feet per second, let's squeeze that in there, which is just positive. 134.4, oops, 4, 4, one more 4. Nine, six feet per second. So once you've got velocity, speed is pretty easy to find. All right, E, when does bugs reach a maximum height? All right, so uh, this is some, this is, notice our position equation, right? So 
We're looking at height here, so that's the position equation. Notice position is a quadratic equation. And actually, uh, when you're looking at projectile movement, that is going to be a quadratic equation. And when does a quadratic at its maximum? Right, notice we've got a negative, a is a negative value, right? This is a concave down um, parabola. And so the maximum position is going to be at the vertex. So all we have to do is find the vertex. All right, so for E, we have, um, so remember to find the vertex, the, um, this, and this just asked for when, right now. All right, so when is going to be H equals negative B divided by 2A. All right, so our, on our equation there, that would be negative 16 divided by 2 times negative 8. Well, that's pretty easy. That's just at one second. So one second, Bugs reaches his maximum height. What's the maximum height? We just have to plug back into the position equation. So we want here S of 1, which would just be negative 8 times 1 squared plus 16 times 1 plus 320. All right, so that's going to be 16 minus, that's going to be 8 plus 320, so that is 328 feet. So that's the maximum height that Bugs reaches. So apparently he goes, he goes 8, when he jumps up uh, at 16 feet per second, he goes 8 feet in the air, and then he falls down 320 feet, plus the 8 feet. All right, so G, find Bugs' velocity at 1 second. All right, so... Now we're finding the, since the um, Bugs reaches his maximum height at one second, we're finding his velocity at his maximum. So we're finding V of 1. So that's going to be negative 16 times 1 plus 16. And that, of course, is going to be 0 feet per second. Now, does that answer make sense? Well, it does make sense, right? Because if that's his maximum, right here, Bugs stops before beginning to fall. Right? He was going up in the air, and then that's his maximum. He stops, and when he hits that maximum, and then he starts falling down, right? So for Bugs to change position, he has to stop, right? You can't do that instantaneously. You have to pause for a second and then start going the other way, all right? So he stops before he's beginning to fall, all right? And now H, find Bugs' average velocity from the time he jumped until the time he land, all right? So if you remember, average velocity is just the slope of the second line. So we just use a slope formula, right? So our average rate of change is going to be, right? So S of 0, because that's when this whole thing starts, till he lands. He lands right here, right, at 7.4031 seconds, right? So, and actually, let's, so we don't have two negatives. Let's do S of 7.4031. Rather than canceling out two negatives. And then minus S of 0 divided by 7.4031 minus 0. All right, so we have, um, oh, we're still going to have a negative, but that's okay because it's a negative change, um, a negative slope, right, from he's way up, way up here. Uh, but I think this will be a nicer equation, anyhow, um, to plug in the 7.4301 first and have the positive at the bottom and the negative at the numerator. Not that it makes a difference. All right, so its height at 7.4031, 7 at 7 of course, is 0. His height, when no time has gone by, is going to be 320. All right, so let's simplify that. I just need to find where to put the calculator. All right, so 320 
divided by 7.4031. Average rate of change, 43.2251 feet per second. This will also be a feet per second, right? Because velocity is instantaneous rate of change. Uh, our, um, and the average rate of change, the slope of the secant line, that approximates instantaneous rate of change. It is going to be the same units, right? So average rate of change um, looks at it just as, as though we're finding as though the rate of change is constant, right? So the, if we convert the instantaneous rate of change to just a constant rate of change, we get 43.2251 feet per second. But we know bugs um, that the this, that bug is not traveling at a constant rate of change, right? That's a parabola, right? At first, you know, the rate of change, when, once uh, he turns around, right, it starts off slowly, and then he starts picking up pace as he's getting towards the ground, right? And we know that the final average, the, the final velocity was 100 and, was it 100, somewhere up here? Um, I forgot where we put it. 134.4496 feet per second, right? So that's much faster than the average rate of change. But there were times, of course, right, that Bugs's rate of change was less, right? When he first starts to fall, his rate of change would be less. All right, so we have answered all of the questions on this one. Nice, good review of acceleration, velocity, um, excuse me, not acceleration, just position and velocity uh, and average rate of change. All right, so... Um, thanks for watching this video. Join me in the next one where we're going to look at another problem. All right? Thanks for watching and bye for now.